from CMRI system. In front of us we have a control panel which is modeled after the union switch and signal panels um, that were built in the 1940s and the 1950s. Uh, as part of a previous job I operated one of these panels in, in a real life situation and so the design is mainly taken from my memory of its operation. On this panel we have a diagram of our track called the schematic. Our trains have a direction west and east so our eastward trains travel to the left and our westward trains travel to the right. These three tracks are connected at both ends because the layout is built as a, uh, as a loop. And <clears throat> if we look at the layout, this part of the, the diagram is the right way up. And then as the oval comes around, this part is upside down. And so our yard, Coburg Yard, is represented here. But the tracks in the yard are not displayed on the panel because they're under the control of the yardmaster. We have three basic types of trains, or two basic types of trains. We have local trains that start from the yard, either from this end or that end, make their way onto the layout, onto our main tracks proper, and do switching at Independence, switching at Sugar Creek, and switching at Centropolis. There are three industries in Centropolis, two at Independence and two at Sugar Creek. To um, start a train out of the yard, we, as the yard master will tell us which way the train is going, so if it's a westward train we should expect to see it here. The first signal that the train will come up to is 10R. The R stands for right. The opposing signal is 10L or left. You have to imagine that the train, the front of the train is moving in this direction and the signal is pointing in the direction of the train's travel. So that means that the train will first see 10R. The train will not see 10L because it's against the train's direction of travel. Now, in order to give a train that signal, several conditions have to be met. First of all, the turnout needs to be set properly. All of the odd numbered controls on the panel are turnouts. 23, 25, 17, 15, 19, 11, 9, 7, and 3. This is in the following uh, with you union switch and signal practice. So in order to give that, I must first set the turnout properly. Another feature of these panels, or schematics, is the normal direction of the turnout is indicated by the solid line, or the unbroken line, and the reverse position of the turnout is indicated by the broken line. So, that needs to be set to the reverse position. Remember, we're starting from here, and we're traveling up to here. So we'll set that to the reverse position. That's number 11. So we look for number 11 down here. So the first action we can take is put number 11 to the reverse position. Now this takes some time before it completes. Again, this is uh, similar to the prototype where there is a time delay while waiting for turnouts to change position and then the light comes on to tell us that it's been done. That also tells it that the turnout is actually set correctly because this light is run off of a detector on the turnout. So we know that it's physically in the right position now to let this train out. The next condition that has to apply, I have red lights on the panel where every block is. The next condition that must apply is the block must be clear or the light is out. If there were a train in this block <coughs> anywhere, this light would illuminate. Also, the left signal cannot be cleared against me, which it won't be. If we look down here, ten is, the lever for 10 is standing straight up, which means that the left signal and the right signal are both at stop. So, the turnout set the right way. There's no train here. There's no opposing signal, 26. 
because we have to go out past the next junction to be sure there's no opposing movement. If all those things are correct, we should be able to ask for the right signal, and we should get it. And we notice that yes, it was okay to do that. We have a green light saying that the signal is cleared. And a couple of other things have happened. In railroad signaling, it's not permissible to change turnouts once a signal has been cleared. So the turnouts that are protected by 10 are 9 and 11. 9 and 11 now have a red light over the center of them indicating that they are locked. The other switch that's affected by this is 19, and if we look down this end, 19 is also locked. So we cannot change those. Because the system is fully interlocked, if I move this lever now, no action takes place. The interlocking facility says, no, we can't change the turnout because you've told the train that it's safe to proceed. Okay, so I can't change them. Likewise, so any switch that's locked by this red lamp cannot be changed. Now here comes the green and now signal. we have a signal. This train will be able to move out now. The other thing that's happened as a result of that is that we've set our, direc our direction of traffic has been set on the intermediate blocks. I've got four intermediate blocks. This one, this one, and this one, and this one. The other thing that's worth noting, because again the layout is a loop, these two blocks are identical to these two blocks. So if there is a train anywhere in here, both the red lights will be on. What if you want to change your mind? Okay. If you want to take this signal away from the train that's approaching it, the train may not be able to stop in time. And so what actually happens is, if we do set the signal to stop, everything that was locked stays locked and it will do so for 30 seconds. Okay, here comes the green signal. The job that we've cleared from uh, signal 10R has proceeded through our plant or interlocking and is now in this intermediate block. The red light shows that the train is uh, in that track section. The traffic indicator shows that it is a westward train and so it is moving from left to right. The indicator is important because otherwise there is no way of telling which direction the train is moving in. If the dispatcher has put the train into this block and then deals with some other work or another train or has to talk to the yardmaster, as it were, and he's holding this train at the next signal, when he comes back to the panel, he needs to have some way of remembering which direction the train was going in. And so this tells you. With the traffic set to the westward direction, it's not possible to clear a signal against that. If I was to try and clear 26 left, which is against that, the system will not allow it. Once again, the interlocking has protected me from putting two trains into each other. Now, the, if we want to send the train on its way, um, to the next section of track. The next signal the train is looking at is 26R, 26 right. 26R protects turnouts 25, which is a crossover, and turnouts 23, another crossover. In order for me to clear 26 right, 25 needs to be normal, 
straight through, and 23 needs to be normal. 